So when it comes to that curiosity, what can I learn from someone in the workplace? How do we strengthen it with our peers and colleagues? Yeah, and I and I think it's really important that you highlight the perceived tension between being curious about other people versus solving a problem and getting to the answer faster. Where where a lot of this methodology for me originated was in the context of management consulting, where we are solving problems all the time. Um, and what we realized is that if we are just coming into our clients and saying, we've analyzed your problem, here's the solution, here's what you should do, and we don't ask them any questions, not only does that push them away and alienate us, but chances are the solution that we are coming up with is not a complete solution. It might even be the completely wrong solution. What we need to be doing is to say, here's what I'm thinking. What does that make you think? What am I missing? What, what is another way to look at this problem? And so the kind of connective curiosity that I'm talking about is not just about what are your feelings and how, what's our relationship like. It's what do you see? What information do you have that I don't have? What stories have you lived in this company, in this industry, in this life? You know, All of these things that will literally help me to check my own thinking. It's even curiosity about what might be the holes in my own approach. When, if, I, if I can be curious about that, and what might somebody else know about that? I'm getting to my answers so much better and so much faster. And sometimes it's as pointed as, what is your reaction to what I just shared? What is your reaction? Yeah, we can talk about that as again when we talk about questions. That is one of the most underutilized questions. What is your reaction? How does that land with you? It's too often we assume that, ju- that once I say my view, if the other person has a reaction, of course they're going to say it to me. But there's so many reasons, especially if we're working across any kind of lines of difference or power differences, et cetera, they're not going to tell you their reaction unless you communicate that you want to know their reaction. Um, and just that simple question is so underutilized. Well, that reaction brings up a good point. That reaction is due to an, an emotion, a emotion from what was said and what is being discussed. Sitting in that emotion, sharing that emotion is what connects us. Right? Just going through the logistics of here's the problem, here's the solution is not going to bond anyone. It's not going to make anyone want to work with somebody. It's all it does is bring awareness to what this person, how they see what that problem solution is. I mean, we need that back and forth. And for, for us to want to work with somebody in order, and then also in order to connect, we have to feel that the other person understands me. They get me. They see and hear me. And that can't happen unless I'm able to fully disclose how I'm feeling, uh, the way I'm looking at things. Uh, Without that, how do I know that this other person is vibing with me, that they understand what I need from them in order for any solution to work? 100%. Yes. That builds the foundation of connection. And we videotape our clients. So getting back to your earlier point around body language, we will often ask them to read just off the cuff what's their body language. And it's so funny how interesting and often it's mismatched. So the person who's actually reacting is reacting in a way that the body language doesn't actually match how they're feeling on the inside. Yet we have this view of body language like it's this perfect reflection of how the person's perceiving what we just said, how they're reacting to what they just heard and what their next move or emotion is. When in reality, we are again, as you said earlier, just guessing at chance, throwing darts at the wall. So delving a little deeper into curiosity, because this is ultimately the skill set that we want all of our listeners to master because it unlocks all of the other steps in the method. Um, For those of us who like speed, like velocity, want to just move forward and plow ahead, curiosity and taking the time and the pause to survey and ask these questions can feel monotonous, sluggish, and, and keep us from getting to the results that we want as fast as possible. What do you say to that person who wants to move quickly and maybe not be as curious as they should be? I mean, what I would say to that is if you are happy with the results you're getting in your work and your life, you're doing something right. But chances are, for any one of us, there is some edge that we have. There's a learning edge, there's a performance edge, et cetera. There's some place where we're stuck. And it's at that moment that that, that curiosity is going to be the thing that unlocks you. So I'm not saying you have to stop and ask yourself, do I shave this way in the morning? Do I get in my car? Do I have to Like there's lots of things that we can just do their routine tasks or that we're good at, or that we're successful at and it's working for us. Go for it. But when you want to level up, when you want to get over that challenge, that's the moment when curiosity is going to be your unlock. 